Hey everyone, welcome to My Wife the Dietitian, a weekly podcast about lifestyle and healthy eating. I'm Rob, and together with my wife, Sandra, we invite you to join us on this informative yet entertaining journey through the complex world of healthy eating. We'll cover everything but the kitchen sink. Each week, we'll discuss topics ranging from how to protect yourself from developing cancer, spicy foods to rev up the libido, to caring for your palliative grandfather with Alzheimer's. We'll also delve into more complex issues like, what the heck is oat milk? Why doesn't my butt fit into these jeans? And every guy's favorite question, will eating spinach really make it bigger? Join us each week as we strive to educate, enlighten, and entertain you. Oh, hey there. So Sandra asked me to do a catchy intro for our episode this week, all about calcium. And there's nothing catchier than a fun little ditty, am I right? I guarantee this song will be in your head all week. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Dem bones, dem bones, dem dancing bones, dem bones, dem bones, dem dancing bones, dem bones, dem bones, dem dancing bones, doing the skeleton dance. The hip bones connected to the knee bone, the knee bones connected to the wrist bone, the wrist bones connected to the leg bone. We're doing the skeleton dance. Now you get the idea. So you're probably saying, "Thanks for that, Rob." But why are you singing to me about bones? I thought this show was about nutrition. Well, our diet plays a big role in the health of our bones. And in this episode, we're talking all about the importance of calcium in our diet. What is it? How much you need? How to get it? As well as some of the issues around getting too much or not enough. It's a good one. Stay with us. Them bones, them bones, them dancing bones, them bones, them bones, them dancing bones. I know you're singing it. Come on, how can you not? Bones, them bones, them dancing bones, them bones, them bones, them. Welcome to episode 18 of My Wife the Dietitian. Hello, Sandra. Hi, Rob. How's it going? I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm well. What are we talking about this week? Calcium, cracking the bone density code. Oh, that sounds like a fun one. Yeah, it's our skeleton. It is. That's uh, all the calcium. That's why we need calcium, right? Because it strengthens all of our bones and our teeth and and all that stuff. Exactly. It's the most abundant mineral in the body. And 99% of it is stored in our bones and teeth, like you said. And 1% is in uh, the blood and tissue used for muscle contraction and blood pressure and nerve transmission and helping with blood clotting. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. It has to, in our body, um, the homeostasis uh, in the blood is in a very um, small window of of, uh, good opportunity. So our body really tries to correct itself when the blood calcium gets too high or too low. So it's basically our bones are uh, like a bank of bone of uh, calcium. Oh, that's really neat. And then it it gets takes it, it out. takes it from the bone. Oh, okay. That's why there's issues with like osteoporosis. Exactly. Where it's, oh, oh, wow. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, deposits and withdrawals. Deposits and withdrawals is like continually happening because our skeleton is not a static thing. It's dynamic. It's n- it's a living organism. It's not like a rock. It's always changing the skeleton. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Um, what was I going to ask you? I can't remember. I'm sure I'll, I'm sure it'll come up though. That's okay. We're going to talk about what it is, why calcium's important in our diet, and lifestyle habits that may lead to insufficient calcium intakes and deficiencies and in the long term osteoporosis. Right. And we'll talk about food sources that are rich in calcium and we'll discuss supplements. Okay. And I think you had mentioned in one of the previous episodes that calcium, well, our osteoporosis isn't just like an old age issue. It's something we have to think about when we're younger, like keeping our bones strong so that they don't deteriorate when we get old. Yeah, that's. Right? I'm so glad you said that because, uh, yeah, I think we talked about it in episode two, the preteen vegetarian. 
Right. And we talked, we discussed how um, kids that decide to become vegetarian or, or adults or anybody, one of the um, nutrients at risk is calcium because if they decide not to have dairy, then that's a big source of calcium in their diet. And um, osteoporosis is kind of like a pediatric disease with geriatric consequences. Right. I'll just mention too that that episode isn't specifically for people who have a vegetarian preteen. There's some really good info, like general good information in there for everybody. So don't be afraid to listen to it just because it's you don't think it applies to you. Totally. That's it. I'm glad you said that. I actually, it's funny because I've been lis- re listening to some of our episodes, and because uh, most of our episodes we say, oh, we're going to address that in a future episode. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so this is one um, that we're going to address because I I did mention we'll talk about that in a in a future episode about calcium and just dive deeper. Yeah. So here we are. So why is calcium important? Uh, other than it keeps your bones healthy, strong. Yeah, it's um. There's uh, if you think of our bone health, think of a, a three legged stool. Okay, got that. Okay, so there's three elements that are super important for bone health. And calcium's one of those three legs. Right. And the other two are vitamin D. Okay. Which helps our gut absorb calcium. And if we don't have enough vitamin D, we might not get enough calcium. And it's got this uh, important uh, relationship. And then the third leg is... Uh, Let me just... Take a wild guess. Exercise? <laughs> You're looking at the whiteboard. I know, I'm cheating. <laughs> That's okay. So the exercise, um, we will get into that a little bit, but uh, that's another, um, a third of the importance of bone health. You know what's kind of interesting, and this is a little bit of a tangent, but s- somewhat related. I've been uh, feeling really stiff lately when I wake up in the morning, and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm sort of like Googled it and tried to figure out what's going on. and. <laughs> And, sure. Okay. And it's one of the things that it suggests, which you don't. Isn't that called morning wood, honey? Morning wood. Yes. Just I've joking. been suffering from. Yeah, you're crazy. Um, now I can't think straight. <laughs> you're blushing. I am this blushing. This is great. It's I got you me. to blush. It's usually me cracking the jokes at you. <laughs> but today we're talking about cracking the bone density code. Yeah, but let me finish my story. <laughs> okay. So I'm I'm looking it up and it says that if you're feeling stiff, maybe like getting more exercise will help you, which seems like the opposite because my body's really sore and stiff. It seems like the last thing my body would want to do is move more and exercise. But uh, it's I guess it makes sense. You need to lubricate the joints. Yeah, get and... the moving and whatnot, oh, right? So, yeah, yeah, um, like our body's dynamic too, and we need flexibility and cardiovascular exercise and weight bearing exercise that's what we're talking about today oh good yeah use it or use it or lose it i guess comes in yeah to here so that's where the exercise part fits in with your bone health that's right and probably why older people maybe suffer more from that because they aren't getting as much exercise as younger people that's part yeah exactly and you think of the three-legged stool calcium vitamin d exercise So um, if any of those are lacking or um, less than they should be, uh, then that's going to affect your bone health. Right. And interesting uh, about exercise, kids that do gymnastics or weight bearing activity, they have stronger bone mass than swimmers and cyclists. Because those aren't weight bearing. Exactly. Especially swimmers. Yep. And cyclists. But those things are really good for you still. Oh, they're excellent. Yeah. Just any any exercise is great. Any cardiovascular exercise is excellent. But in, if we're talking about bone density and bone mass, you need gravity to pull down on the bone to help pull the muscle. And uh, it affects your skeleton. Right. So variety. So if you're just swimming, then you should think about doing some weight bearing activities as well to even things out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, and I think we've mentioned like astronauts who go up into space where there's no gravity, they do come back to earth with a degree of osteoporosis because they don't have that gravity and weight bearing activity. Like the weight is really important. Yeah. Right. Peak bone mass is built within the first three decades of someone's life. Right. 
and uh, someone can have inadequate calcium intake for years and suffer no noticeable symptoms at all. Only later in life will things start to happen where more fractures and maybe osteopenia, which is comes before osteo, osteoporosis. Right. So there are definitely lifestyle habits that, that may lead to insufficient calcium intakes and deficiency. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, just as episode number two talks about um, becoming vegetarian, but then not really replacing the dairy or, you know, getting calcium rich foods and fluids in your diet every day. Right. I see. So um, that's one uh, thing that could lead to insufficient calcium intakes if you're not careful. Also, long-term dieting or restrictive eating can have an impact on your calcium intake and then lead to deficiencies and osteoporosis down in the future. Is that dependent on if your calcium intake is lower because of that diet? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if you're, you know, restricting calories and part of that is like, you know, watching, oh, I'm not going to have yogurt, I'm not going to have cheese, I'm not going to have milk. Yeah, like there's a lot of diets that re- uh, restrict what you can eat, but if you don't replace those nutrients in another way with foods that you can eat, then yeah, you're going to have deficiencies and issues. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, that's. I'm glad you clarified that. Well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> exactly. It's great because, uh, you know, I, I have all this information and I like to translate it into a way that people can understand it. And when you ask questions like that, it leads me to um, realize that I need to expand on that thought or or uh, explanation. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. The other uh, lifestyle habit um, that many people have are a very high caffeine intake uh, chronically, like for long term. Um, and that's three and a half cups of coffee or 450 milligrams of caffeine a day, day after day after day. Like if that's a lifestyle habit, then that could actually be very detrimental to your skeleton. And a lot of people, that's just part of their morning routine, like grabbing a big coffee on the way to work or going for one at lunch or whatever. It's part of their daily, you know, Monday to Friday lifestyle. Yeah. And and having a cup of coffee is no big deal. That's fine. But it's like if you're getting over that 450 milligrams of caffeine day after day, then that's when it becomes more of an issue. And how how many cups, like an eight ounce cup, is that what we're talking about? Mm hmm. Because I'll have like a mug in the morning, which is probably two cups. Mm, okay. And sometimes, uh, you know, it's, yeah, like one of those large, like uh, coffee shop kind of coffees. They're pretty big. They're 20 ounces probably. Yeah. So that's almost, that's getting close to three cups of coffee first thing in the morning. For some people, yeah. For some people, yeah. So just, yeah, you got to look at the quantity. It's not just, oh, I'm having my cup of coffee. It's like, no, I'm having my three cups of coffee on the way to work and then maybe more throughout the day. Who knows? So, yeah, be aware of the quantities as well. Yeah, exactly. No, that's good. And the thing is, too, when you have too much of one thing, you probably aren't having enough of another thing. Right. But at the same time, if you put milk or a calcium rich, uh, like a plant based milk alternative with calcium and vitamin D in your coffee or your tea, then that helps to give you that calcium. Right. And helps offset that caffeine um, detriment to the bone. Gotcha. Another lifestyle habit that may lead to insufficient calcium intake is lactose intolerance. Oh, well, that makes sense. But there's calcium in other foods too, right? But I guess our main source of calcium typically is through dairy. Yeah, there are. And we will get into our calcium rich food sources. And there are vegetarian or plant based calcium sources for sure. Uh, You just get a lot per serving. You get a lot in dairy. So that helps with uh, getting those the calcium intake. Right. Okay. And there are definitely alternatives for people that are lactose intolerant, like the plant based milk alternatives or... Um, which are fortified, and they have the equivalent amount of calcium in a cup of soy milk, for instance, as a cup of cow's milk. But also there's lactase milk. So the milk has been treated with the lactase enzyme, 
and that breaks down the, the milk sugar that pe- some people can't tolerate. Oh, okay. And then there's also other ways to deal with that. Like there's lactase tablets you take before having dairy. Like if you're having ice cream or uh, milk and you want to drink it or you want to eat it, you can take the uh, lactase tablet uh, enzyme and you just get them in the grocery store. And or that's if you're lactose intolerant? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it okay. breaks down the lactase enzyme. The, sorry, the lactose, milk sugar. Right. Interesting. Hmm. The other thing about lactose, there's also a liquid lactase enzyme where you drop it in a cup of milk and it breaks down the lactose milk sugar in the, a glass of milk. Oh, really? You add it right to the, right to the milk itself? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's different ways to deal with a lactose intolerance. Um, also, many people can't um, really tolerate a whole cup of milk, like cow's milk, but yogurt, they can tolerate. There's less lactose in yogurt. And because it's uh, got the active culture, it actually helps with digestion. So it's usually not as big of a problem. Um, Ice cream is usually a big problem for people that have a lactose intolerance. Uh, Cheese is typically tolerated but not for everyone like every there's a scale right like some people have an extreme lactose intolerance they can't have anything with any bit of lactose and then there's other people that can you know they just can't drink a cup of milk but they are able to have cheese and yogurt without having the the symptoms of lactose intolerance like um, indigestion and cramping and bloating and diarrhea and all that can you explain what lactose is like, are there benefits to having lactose in the food, in the dairy? So lactose is a natural occurring milk sugar, and it's um, it's made of galactose and glucose together. So it's two molecules. Right. And <laughs> we're getting into chemistry here. Fine. But uh, that's why some people can't uh, absorb it and digest it well. So they break down that, the milk sugars. Okay. Uh, with the lactase enzyme that breaks apart the lactose. But why not remove it altogether? Like, is there a benefit to having it in there for the people who can tolerate it? Well, some studies suggest that lactose may have a prebiotic effect for some people. So it might stimulate the growth or activity of certain good bacteria in the gut. Right. Okay. And the amount of lactose in dairy food varies. Um, As I mentioned, like a cup of milk has way more lactose than cheese, for instance. But yeah, it's... uh, it's just a natural occurring milk sugar in dairy, in milk. Okay, interesting. This was curious. Yeah, so if uh, if you're cutting out dairy um, and you're not, you don't have other sources of calcium foods and fluids in your diet, then that puts you at risk for insufficient calcium intakes and long-term um, deficiency puts you at risk for osteoporosis. Right, okay. I should mention... People highest risk of osteoporosis are women over 50, uh, white, like Caucasian and Asian women. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And there is a link. Definitely. um, There's a hormone link with calcium and bone mass. So after like menopause, you lose calcium from your bone because you don't have as much estrogen circulating in your system. Okay. So that's, you start losing it more frequently. Or in bigger amounts or... Yeah, remember the bone bank? Yeah. The skeleton and the bank. So your body's pulling out of the bank, like withdrawing the calcium from the bone. Kind of like your pension when you get older. (laughs) I guess so. Yeah, you put it in there all your life and then it starts pulling it out when you're older, right? Yeah, and and a good way to tell if you might be at risk for fractures is if you have a significant height loss more than two inches. And if you have receding gums, because remember, it's part of bone and teeth. If you have a lower back pain or curve uh, stooped shape to the spine. Okay. So those are some... Indicators? Yeah, exactly. Of? Of uh, possible osteoporosis. Okay. And fragility-related fractures occur when even mild impact causes a wrist uh, back, hip, or other bone fracture hmm. in um, frail women. Right, okay. So, uh, you know, there is something to be said to have a little bit extra meat on your bones. And remember, the scale is uh, not always a great indicator of your health because if you have low weight, that means your skeleton might not be super strong. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's good to point out. I think a lot of women, especially 
um, look at the scale and, and they, d they forget to factor in that our bones have mass and we want good bone mass. Yeah, it's it, society has taught us that it's all about like weight is the highest priority as far as social acceptability. You know, you have to look a certain way and weigh a certain amounts, uh, but they don't factor in the other health uh, factors, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, just to reiterate, it's really important to have good bone mass. And if you can get good amount of calcium uh, in the first three decades, that's really important. Yes. Excellent to know. So another lifestyle habit that may lead to insufficient calcium intake would be too much pop and soda. Yeah. I mean, I, there's no benefit to those. But there's actually a chemical thing that happens. So the phosphoric acid in uh, pop and soda, even in diet pop, upsets the balance of calcium. Okay. So the other thing about drinking too much pop or soda is, as I mentioned before, displacing nutrient-rich fluids. And so if you're drinking too much pop, then you are probably not drinking plant-based alternatives or milk or calcium-rich fluids or water. Yeah. Healthy, healthy beverages. Exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah, good point. Yeah. The next one is a lifestyle habit that may lead to insufficient calcium intake would be too much sodium in your diet. Okay, which is salt. Yeah, exactly. Right. So if you had a daily intake of 3,000 to 5,000 milligrams of sodium, um, and we're going to talk about sodium in more detail in a future episode there. Mm. <laughs> I just did it. Um, but if you have that much salt in your diet, which is, I think, kind of the average North American intake, that can reduce bone density. And there's a bit of a, a formula with that. So can you just, nobody knows how much salt that is. I mean, what, what does that look like? Is that like a handful of salts or like a, like a pinch of salt, like whatever milligrams you just said there? How, what do you think that is in terms of, and it's not just adding like shaking salt on your food. It's, it's, there's sodium in a lot of different foods, right? So I'm just curious as to how someone would easily measure that without getting out a calculator and, you know. Yes. Okay. How much, let's see, just a second. Sandra's just getting out her calculator to do the formula here and just get the measuring cups out and the Bunsen burner and doing it all so you don't have to. We're making it easy for you because that's what we do. And you're funny, Rob. <laughs> do, 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 There's 1,500 milligrams of salt in a teaspoon. 1,500 milligrams in a teaspoon. And you said 1,100 a day. No, I said 3,000 to 5,000 milligrams a day. Oh, okay. And that's, remember, in uh, processed foods and adding salt to your food. And there's a lot of, you know, hidden sodium in our diet. So yeah. um, it is the average intake is, is pretty high. So when we take in 1,100 milligrams of sodium, we actually excrete calcium in our urine. Really? Yeah, and it's a loss of 203 milligrams of calcium. So almost the amount in a cup of milk. Um, so we're taking in lots of salt and then your calcium's excreted in the urine. Oh, I had no idea. Every so 150 more... milligrams of calcium eaten excretes 20 milligrams of salt. So it's the opposite happens. If you add more calcium, then you can lose some of the sodium. Interesting. Wow. That's crazy. I mean, crazy cool. Yeah, so decreasing the sodium in your diet may reduce blood pressure in salt-sensitive individuals, and it can help with preserving calcium for bone density. Hmm. We are learning a lot today. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the, I mean, the sodium in the diet, I mean, um, there's a lot, you know, there's been controversy. Oh, it doesn't matter. I can have lots of salt, but it can impact your bone density. Wow. Yeah. I've never, uh, I never realized that those two were related. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's also medical conditions uh, that can put you at risk for osteoporosis. Um, and there are lots of them in our society, unfortunately. So people who have to be on long-term steroid therapy, like corticosteroids, uh, prednisone, that depletes calcium over time. Oh, really? Yeah. So uh, that puts uh, the person at risk of osteoporosis. People with celiac 
uh, disease might need to have some prednisone uh, intermittently through if through flare ups hmm. and uh, IBD, so intestinal bowel disease, but that could be Crohn's too. And um, those conditions usually are taking um, steroids. Also, the vitamin D uh, is absorbed in the small intestine. And so people with IBD or celiac or Crohn's can not, you know, maybe they're not getting enough vitamin D absorption. Right. Okay. And that impacts how much calcium our body takes in. Interesting. Yeah, I wonder if people with those issues are aware of those things, hopefully. Well, hopefully, you know, when they're getting their prescriptions for whatever corticosteroids they have to take, that uh, there is a warning about uh, long-term risks, basically. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they can also impact, this is a side note, and we'll talk about it in another episode, but they can impact uh, blood sugar and people can develop diabetes taking uh, steroids long-term. Oh, okay. So people also having cancer treatment and chemotherapy, systemic therapy, do have to take steroids to help trick their body to think that everything's okay. And that is a steroid that can impact their calcium and their bone health. Over over long term. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Also, multiple myeloma is another type of cancer. And kidney and liver disease, those conditions can affect calcium and risk of osteoporosis. Mm. And rheumatoid arthritis is another one. Wow. Lots of stuff, hey? Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of those tend to be in women over 50. So they're already at the higher risk of developing osteoporosis. And now there's all these other kind of an a layering effect of risk. Wow, yeah, no doubt. Okay, so people may wonder, well, what's my calcium requirement? Um, and depending on your age and sex, then that uh, affects how much calcium you need. So it's too bad there's not a rule that could apply to it. You're reading the whiteboard. Oh, always. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to stay one step ahead of you. Well, you're actually two steps right now because uh, first I want to talk about requirements and then we can talk about sources of calcium and we'll talk about the rule of 300. Oh, okay. There is a rule. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my god. You kind of blew my cover though. <laughs> I was trying to be, I was trying to sound smart. <laughs> well, it's okay. I love how you take in this information and you completely absorb it. And so, you know, I mean, you have 18 episodes worth of information. We could almost call you a registered dietitian soon. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not that easy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> There's a little bit more work involved. I'm just teasing. I've watched you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the requirements. So um, ages, adults, basically, under 50 need a thousand milligrams and over 50 you need 1200 milligrams of calcium yes per day per day that's right and uh four-year-olds to 18-year-olds need 1300 milligrams so a little bit more than over 50 okay right because they're growing and they need to get their their skeleton strong exactly that's right so yeah um and i think a lot of kids fall short with their calcium intake. Uh, upper limit, so upper tolerable limit for the RDI for calcium is 2,500 milligrams. And what happens if you go over? Um, it's usually not because of eating and drinking calcium-rich food sources. It's usually you go over when you have supplements. Oh, okay. And you get too much that way. And we'll talk about that. But yeah, kidney stones, um, arteries, you can get the calcium... Um, build up in the arteries. Okay. Uh, it's a mineral, so it's not a water-soluble vitamin like vitamin C, for instance, where you can pee out the extra. Your body stores it. It's a mineral, so oh, it's got to be stored somewhere and ends up usually, you know, possibly uh, kidney stones can develop right. or in your arteries. Interesting. Yeah. So um, the rule of 300. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that is basically in a serving of calcium rich food or fluid there's a 300 milligrams oh per serving i see yeah so, so you follow that then you'll get your recommended amount for the day yeah um, exactly so you think of say if your if your recommended amount is a thousand milligrams a day 
And if you eat or drink three, um, three servings of calcium rich foods a day, you'll get 900 and then you'll get a little bit in the other foods that have some calcium. Gotcha. But the rule of 300 usually is talking about those really good sources of calcium. So a cup of yogurt, for instance, has 300 milligrams, a cup of milk or milk alternative, uh, a whole cup has 300 milligrams. Uh, three ounces of cheese or three slices has 300 milligrams. Right. And one cup of cottage cheese has 150 milligrams. So half of that. So you'd have to have two cups. Yeah, you need two cups. Of, that's how that's how my brain works. Okay, I need more. I need two cups. <laughs> well, you can afford lot. to just uh, eat bigger servings of everything. But yeah, so that's probably a lot for most people, like two cups of cottage cheese in one sitting. No, thanks. I mean, yeah. I like cottage cheese, but. Not that, that much. Is, that's a lot. Um, yeah. So one cup gives you 150 milligrams. So it's not quite as good a source as yogurt and, and milk and milk alternatives. Right. But it's yummy. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, there are uh, plant sources of calcium that uh, you can include to help with your calcium intake. So they, they're kind of in different categories, actually like soy, uh, there's tofu, uh, usually it's set in a calcium medium. Oh, I see. So it's got calcium in it. Right. Uh, and then edamame, you know, the little uh, edamame beans. They're like soybeans, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, soybeans and tempeh, they all have some calcium. The green leafy vegetables have some calcium, calcium. So bok choy and spinach, collard greens, kale, broccoli. There's good amount of calcium in beans and chickpeas and lentils oh great there's some in figs oh really figs yeah yeah there's yeah there's some calcium in figs oh i didn't mention seaweed like kelp and wakami they they have some uh, calcium flax seeds and chia have flax uh calcium and almonds and brazil nuts also have some calcium nice and uh one of the richest source of absorbable calcium is canned fish with bones. Like uh what like sardines? Yes, and salmon. Salmon. What's the yeah. what are the what are the little uh, sardines I guess I'm thinking. Yeah. Or no, I'm thinking tuna. Is that is that They don't have bones. Oh. oh they it's don't the can salmon. them with the bones. It's yeah. the sam canned salmon that I Yeah, sardines, yeah, yeah. anchovies, right. mackerel, any canned fish with bones. If you mix up the bones, it's really like quite uh, soft, the bones, but that our gut absorbs the calcium. They're rich in vitamin D. It's really good. So you want to eat that part when you open the can. You're not like, hey, let's take that out. You want to actually <laughs> mush it down and because you said they're soft. So you just mash it in and that's, that's super good for you. Yeah, super excellent absorbable source of calcium. And that's the other thing with like supplements. We'll talk about the um, how well they ab- are absorbed. But uh, yeah, plant sources of calcium are um, another, you know, another way to get more calcium. But there are some uh, things to consider. So they're in the greens, like uh, the leafy greens, the calcium, it's a bit harder to our gut to absorb because of the oxalates in the greens. Okay. And so it's better um, when you cook your greens, you're going to get the calcium from those greens rather than when they're raw. Don't you lose some of the other nutrients when you cook it, though? Yeah, so it's like a you know you lose the water soluble vitamins. Okay. So there's that. Um, I mean, if you cooked it, say in a lasagna, say there's spinach in a lasagna, it's it stays in that food. Like even though you know what I mean, like oh, it's cooked it's, in. It's cooked into the food. Yeah. It doesn't evaporate. That's right. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you if you steam them or boil, then you're losing the water soluble vitamins. But um, it's better for absorption of the calcium. Right. And the other thing is there's something called phytates in beans and they bind calcium. So that's in the legumes and lentils and beans and chickpeas. So to help make the calcium more absorbable in those foods, if you soak those and sprout ferment, those that's a way to get calcium. So I'm talking more about like when... People are um, not taking dairy, for instance, and they're, you know, maybe vegan and they're trying to get more calcium in their diet. This would be one way to do it is to, 
you know, soak the beans and sprout right. and f- ferment. So then you'll get some more calcium out of those foods. Right. And there's not as much calcium per serving in these. No, as, there's uh, not. You're right. Yeah. So you need you need to eat, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So almonds are pretty good. I mean, a quarter cup of almonds is almost 100 milligrams of calcium. Okay. So that's that's a fair amount. Uh, uh, not a, f- a big handful. That's a, a bit in your hand, I guess. Yeah, Quarter yeah, cup. exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's about like, that's what, you know, when we talked about the mind diet and trying to get some nuts every day, that's about how many? Right. Like about a quarter cup. That's doable for sure. Yeah. So that gives you a little bit uh, more calcium too. So Awesome. Yeah. Um, now, remember I said that uh, there's three legs to the stool mm-hmm. and the vitamin D is important. So we really need to make sure that uh, we're getting our recommended amount of vitamin D. So 400 I use, older people 600 or 800. So depending on what's happening, you might need more vitamin D than the 400 IU, which is typically in a multivitamin mineral. But the upper limit with vitamin D is 4,000 IU. And that's not just through supplement, but through what you're getting in your food. Yeah, we don't get a ton of vitamin D in our food. No. It's a sunshine vitamin, and uh, we get it through the sun. When it hits our skin, it makes the hormone vitamin D. And um, if we're, you know, having a a, a long winter. (laughs) Lots of cloudy days. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Then we're not going to get that vitamin D. And uh, so to make sure, you, you know, you might have to supplement with vitamin D just so that your gut can absorb that calcium so that you're keep your bone density strong. Gotcha. Part of um, trying to get enough calcium in your day, if you just know that you're low, then... I just feel it. I just feel like I'm low in calcium. Well, it's not that. It's more like if you kind of reflect, okay, do I have three servings of calcium-rich foods in my day? And if you know typically that you're low, then maybe you need a supplement. And there's a little bit in a multivitamin, but it actually makes the the tablet bigger, the amount of supplements. So a lot of multivitamins don't have much calcium. So the two sources, the two like most common sources of calcium supplements are calcium carbonate and calcium citrate. Okay. Yeah. And um, part of the rule of 300 is your gut only absorbs 300 milligrams of calcium at any one time. So if you go out and buy a thousand milligram supplement, um, that's probably not a good idea. Because even though that's what you need for the day, right? Right. So it's your body can't absorb all that in one go. Yeah, exactly. I don't even know why they sell them. Hmm. It's kind of bizarre because, really, you can absorb three hundred at once, and then what happens to the rest? As I mentioned, you are at risk for kidney stone development, or it can go into the arteries. Yeah, you don't want excess calcium in the body, like getting deposited in your body in various places so it's probably better to stick with the rule of 300 and just have a high calcium source at each meal and if you're taking a supplement just don't take a more than 300 at a time yeah well that makes a lot of sense Mm -hmm. and sometimes well because vitamin d helps the gut absorb calcium some supplements have vitamin d and uh, magnesium is also part of Uh, like a combination yeah pill exactly pill yeah Yeah. So actually, there's an experiment you can do to see how absorbable your calcium supplement is. Remember we did it a couple years ago? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we took our our calcium supplement and you put it into a cup of vinegar and you mix it around, you stir it and you pretend it's kind of like stomach acid and it should dissolve within half an hour. Um, The one we had actually ended up sitting in the cup of vinegar. It didn't dissolve for about a week. Yeah, that was... uh Interesting. Eye opening. Well, yeah. I mean, you don't want it sitting in your gut for a week. It's not really doing much sitting down there. Well, no, it'll probably, yeah, exactly. We don't know if it, what happens to it. It's a mineral, so you don't pee it out. Right. Yeah. So that's uh, just a good example of, you know, maybe it's better to have a calcium supplement that you chew. Uh, calcium carbonate. So that would be like Tums or um, some of those formulations. Oh, uh, right. And with calcium carbonate, you need stomach acid to absorb it. But with citrate, calcium citrate, it's a bit easier to absorb. So if people have sensitive stomachs and they just don't tolerate um, calcium carbonate, then calcium citrate is probably a better one 
to use. Okay. But it's a little bit more expensive to purchase. So you said Tums. Is that is that an actual uh, supplement? I always I always thought of Tums as more of uh, like something when you have an upset stomach, you take Tums. Yeah, yeah. But it, I mean, it's made with calcium carbonate. Exactly. But would you use that as a supplement? Uh, you could. Yep, definitely. Okay. I mean, that will give you a little bit extra calcium. But in saying that, there are people I know, um, clients that I've had in the past that are taking, you know, eight Tums a day because they have heartburn or acid reflux. And maybe at that level, there's a couple things that are happening. You maybe should go to the doctor and get a medication for the heartburn and acid reflux because um, eight Tums a day, that's a lot of calcium. How much is in one tablet? Well, it depends if it's a regular Tums, an extra strength or ultra. Right. So I know the uh, the extra strength is 300 milligrams. Oh, wow. Really? Of elemental, I believe. That's a lot. Yeah, I know. I, I think a regular strength is 200 milligrams of elemental calcium and extra strength is kind of the most common, I think, that's used. And that's got... 300 milligrams so that's about the same as a cup of milk Wow! and then ultra tums is like the higher strength one that's like the most it's got 450 milligrams of cal- wow, calcium that's so when you really want kidney stones you take those ones <laughs> you're right wow people so people well, just wait wait before you um so before on, i go on a rant yeah on the okay. label with uh calcium it'll say calcium carbonate 750 milligrams so that's actually not what you look at for the amount of calcium it's the elemental calcium so on the back of the label it says elemental calcium and you'll notice it'll be elemental in a um, extra strength is 300 milligrams or 200 in the regular or 450 in the ultra and is that on like a little food label or something yeah it's on On the the... it's in tiny printing right elemental as the ingredient Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So that is comparing apples to apples in terms of we're looking at one extra strength calcium pill has 300 milligrams of elemental calcium, which is equivalent to a cup of milk or, you know, the rule of 300. Mm -hmm. So it's like that a cup of yogurt or three ounces of cheese or, you know, like basically a, um, a high source of calcium. So, yeah, uh, Tums or, you know, the uh, generic brands. They are a source of calcium, but if you are taking a lot of those, then you're probably, because the upper limit with calcium is 2,500. And remember you asked, you asked about that. And Mm -hmm. I said, it usually happens when not with food, but with supplements. Right, right. Especially with like, if you're popping the Tums because you have a heartburn. Well, yeah. I mean, like. You were saying earlier about lactose intolerance or people like like some dairy products are going to cause you to have upset stomach, right? Right. Is that one of the one of the uh, sim- not symptoms, but yeah, or, it's a symptom. Y- yeah. yeah, I guess. So you're drinking tons of milk, eating lots of yogurt and cheese, and you're getting all this upset stomach. So you're like, oh, I better pop a Tums. <laughs> so, oh, I'm still feeling right. crappy. Better pop, right? Yeah, That's no more calcium. Dangerous. So it's like, or, yeah, too much calcium. Weird. So they kind of, yeah, it's interesting. A lot of times we're not getting enough calcium, but in some cases maybe you get too much. Yeah, I never uh, thought of calcium or um, thought of Tums as being like like a supplement that should be in the vitamin cupboard it's more like something it's like a like a throat lozenge that's how i think of tums it's like oh i got a sore throat i'll suck on one of these halls or whatever right yeah but holy yeah be careful with those things yeah but i mean at the same time like remember we talked about the cup of vinegar and putting the the calcium supplement in a cup of vinegar Mm -hmm. and it didn't dissolve right well the tums you chew them so you're going to probably get that calcium. If you chew it, you're going to help it dissolve. Because the tablet we put in the vinegar, you don't chew those. You swallow them. No, but you're getting a lot of calcium. I, I mean, potentially a lot of calcium if you have a, a normal amount through your diet and then you're eating Tums like they're candies. Yeah, oh, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So just be aware that there's a, a good s- serving of calcium per pill. Per pill. Yeah, yeah wow. for sure. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, is there anything else to talk about with calcium? I think that's about it. Yeah, I, that's... I mean, uh, I think the key is just try to, um, 
include three servings of calcium rich foods a day. I didn't mention hummus, but it's really rich in calcium because it's made with the sesame the... seed paste, which okay. is tahini. And that those are high in calcium. And then also chickpeas. Chickpeas, yeah. Yeah. yeah I was going to say they're probably on that list because there's beans and all that. Plus, yeah, hummus. There's, plus sorry, there's um, protein in that and fiber. Yeah, hummus is a good one. I'm going to make some one of these days. Cool. It's on my to-do list. Oh, excellent. I'm looking forward to that. Make hummus. <laughs> make- <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing today? Making hummus. <laughs> Yeah. Make love, not war. Make hummus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make love and hummus. <laughs> That's okay. Make love then hummus. I don't know if it's a sexy food. I guess it depends on if you spread it in places. Anyways, I don't know. Anyways, I think that's it. So um, our challenge to you is to... Eat less Tums. Well... No, I'm just joking. In- increase the um, all those foods that we talked about that are calcium-rich foods. Tofu, broccoli, sesame seeds, kale, beans, figs, chickpeas, soybeans, edamame, tempeh, lentils, spinach, bok choy, collard greens, almonds, brazil nuts, chia, flaxseed, seaweed, and canned fish are awesome. And hummus. Hummus and plant-based milks or regular dairy milk or cheese or yogurt. There you go. There's the shopping list. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, Sandra. That was uh, very informative once again. And... uh, Yeah, I learned a lot, so I hope everyone else did too, and we will be back again with, uh, what are we going to talk about next week? We don't know. We'll We'll find something fun to talk about. So have a good week. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Rob. All right. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today on My Wife the Dietitian. If you like what you heard, don't be shy. Leave us a comment or review, and be sure to share our podcast with your friends. If you'd like to hear more, hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on our social media pages for updates, episode trailers, and other odds and ends. For more info and links on what we discussed on today's episode, check the show notes. We'll be back next week with another informative and fun-filled episode. Bones them, bones them, dancing bones them, bones them.